All right, we now have joining us on the Sharks Audio Network. It is Nick Bonino. Uh, yes, we go to the same barber. Uh, Mr. Bones, what's going on? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well, man. I'm excited to uh, to see you play some hockey again, man. Like April 29th was the last game. We're recording this on September 13th. I have to imagine that you are itching to get back out there. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, you know, the season ends and you take uh, you take a little bit of time and get some rest and, um, you know, get back on the ice. Some guys go on sooner than others, but, uh, you know, skates in the summer, um, they're fun, but they don't really scratch that itch that the games do and the, the season does. So mm -hmm. um, really excited to uh, to be back. Camp starts in a week and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, couldn't be happier. It's getting underway here. What did the break after the season look like for you? Was it just kind of get away from uh, everything and just hang out with the family, or like were you? Did you uh, did you go on vacation immediately, or what? What did it look like? Uh, no, there there wasn't uh, a ton of travel. We um, my daughter's in kindergarten, my oldest, so um, we were around till the beginning of June um, for that to finish, and then um, went home for the summer for a couple months and uh just kind of unplugged went to the mountains a couple times uh just relaxed a really slow pace um got some good workouts in some skates and uh yeah came back a few weeks ago and um back uh, kids are back in school again and uh trying to get back into the uh the in-season mode here yeah no I, I feel you on the scheduling stuff i got uh third grader and first grader so i know the uh, the limitations that the uh the school year can put on trying to get out of town um you know i how long did you take away from getting skating after the end of the year? Like, obviously you're a veteran. You've been at this for a while. It's not like there's that much um, for you to work on in the off season. That's new. I would imagine you've got a pretty good routine. Um, so how long did you stay away from the ice? Um, I think, I think this year, I'd, uh, probably I was skating by the end of June. Um, you know, we finished here and, um, I like to cycle uh, to road bike and um, this is like heaven for cyclists, you know, just uh, here in Los Gatos, just behind us, these mountains, all the mountains here going up Blackberry and um, did, did Uminum. Um, but the problem was I did them right after the year. I was, you're just pissed off. You lose, you're watching playoff games and you want to start working out. You want to get back at it and um, you're still kind of in season shape. So yeah. Uh, I was hitting, I was biking a lot right away and, um, just to kind of stay, stay fit. And then I realized that just, my body just needed a break. So, um, did a couple weeks of that and then, uh, just laid low. And then when we went back to Canada, um, started, started working out a lot and, um, we, we built a gym in the basement. So I don't have to travel and, nice. uh, it's just easier on the family. The kids can come down while I'm working out and play, play floor as lava and, uh, always underfoot. Um, and then, yeah, I started skating probably end of, uh, end of June, July there. And, uh, yeah, had some good skates. Saw Greg a lot, uh, at the skates. So it's good to, to catch up with him as the summer went along. Nice. What, what is your home gym? Like I have a squat rack in my garage, some kettlebells. I have an assault bike. What, what's yours like? Yeah, it's, uh, everything you, you can need. I have, you know, it was, uh, I was planning to build one in the basement anyway. And then um, the pandemic hit and it actually made it a little bit trickier just because fitness equipment was, you know, months out. Yeah. Uh, we played the bubble with Nashville and, and we actually played it in Edmonton and we, we were close to there in the summers. And um, I remember my, we lost in the bubble and I drove to, to our house. I got a ride from my brother-in-law and showed up and, and had to build the whole gym. And these, they were, I think four by six, uh 100 pound rubber mats yeah and just getting those um from the garage down to the basement was like one of the worst things i've had to do it was they're awkward they don't really fold up you can't yeah. really grab them they're just ripping into your uh um your legs they're just you're just getting rashes everywhere but uh so yeah so, so built it from the ground up and have the squat rack i have an assault bike i have a peloton i have a Nice. uh a rower and a skier i like to do a lot of that stuff just yeah. um conditioning wise and then yeah everything you need really everything you need the, the free weights the the adjustable dumbbells and the bands and um 
anything I could think of, I, I put in there just so um, we had it. So my wife and I could work out whenever we wanted. Yeah, dude. It's that. Yeah. I was lucky enough that I had my stuff set up before the pandemic began. It was like the one time in my life I was prepared. So it <laughs> yeah. ended up working out pretty well, but yeah, you're right about just being able to walk out to the garage or the basement in your case, as opposed to having to go somewhere makes, makes things very, uh, very simple. I guess that leads me to a good subject, man. Like I said, you're, you know, you're a veteran. You've been at this for a while. Like I never saw any outward signs from you of being any older than you were a couple of years ago. I mean, I'm sure maybe you could tell me that your hip or your, you know, your shoulder feels a little bit different than it did in, you know, 2015. But I mean, you don't look like you're slowing down, man. You don't look any different today than you did a couple of years ago. You look like you're still in really good shape. I mean, I, you know, you're going out there, you're hopping on your Cannondale and hitting the hills. Are you feeling pretty good? Uh, I feel great, honestly. Um, I appreciate you saying that. I'll knock on wood that my body feels great right now. Um, it, yeah, it's been a long career, but uh, I don't think my game has ever relied on speed. I don't think it's slow, but it's not, you know, I'm not going to win a, the, the puck race against Timo Meyer. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, it's it's just being steady, being consistent. Um, yeah, I actually was watching, there was a game on a, a, during the summer with me in Anaheim and it looked like I had a little bit, a little bit, maybe more pop, but not really. I think, you know, I've stayed just, um, just this speed and rely on a lot of IQ and rely on, um, my brain making plays, my hands making plays. And, um, I like just getting there, getting me where I need to be with, with anticipation. And, um, that does get easier as your career goes on. You learn the timing, you learn the, um, the way the games go, where you need to be to be successful. And, yeah, I, I honestly don't feel like I've slowed down at all. I think I've been pretty consistent um, stat-wise, and uh, that's kind of a focus for me, whether it's game-to-game, uh, -game, season to season, uh, transitioning from regular season to playoffs. It's just staying consistent and um, doing what I, what I do best and uh, helping the team. I, you know, we talk about that consistency and you have been so consistent over your career. I, was it driving you nuts that it took you a while to get that first goal last year? I mean, it seems like yeah. once you got it, then it was just normal Nick Bonino. Um, and you never let on that it was, you know, bugging you too much. But I have to imagine knowing the competitor you are, like, that was probably driving you a little nuts, right? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it was very frustrating. I mean, I didn't go a game. I didn't go, I didn't get a point for 19 games. I didn't get an assist for 29 games. And, um, I do like to think my game doesn't rely on points, but like anyone, I'm, I'm always cognizant of it. And I expect a lot from myself. I think, like you said, once that first one went in, you know, the next 60 games, I had 26 points, which is right about what I'm usually yeah. getting about half a point a game in my career. So, um, I, I couldn't tell you why. I, I, it's easy to say, oh, you're in a new team, you're in a new situation, you're getting your getting used to it. But uh, honestly, last year, just everything went wrong that could have. Uh, you know, I've always been a plus player, and last year I'm minus 1,000, it felt like. It felt like you're doing the right things and you're staying above the puck and the puck just won't stop going in your net. And um, for me, that, that, was, that was the most frustrating part was leaving a game you know, with chances and, and chances for assists, chances for goals, chances uh, for wins, really. And, and you know, being dashed, too. And I'd look at it like I'm playing some of the best hockey I've played and uh, it feels like in a while, you know. I'm, uh, so, so that was definitely frustrating. I think maybe it's something, um, you know, everybody goes through. But uh, definitely, hopefully, can get off to a quicker start this year. My buddy, my buddy, uh, I texted him a, a video of my middle child playing a soccer game this past weekend and and I said she doesn't really know the rules she's four she doesn't really know what's going on out here and he texted back uh classic Benino she'll probably have a slow start and then figure it out about halfway <laughs> through so uh hopefully that's not the um the case this year but uh, I did think that was pretty funny yeah no, that's a good line I dude I, the the puck luck last year for you guys was brutal. And like, I'm not a big believer, believer in luck. I believe that you create your own luck, but the amount of times that, and I was talking to Noah, Noah Gregor about this about two weeks ago, I was like, you would hit the post as squarely as it could possibly be hit. Like you would feel that it would be, you'd get the bounce and he never did. And then he kind of had a, a good little run at the end of the year. And I thought he played well in, in the worlds over in Finland, but like, it wasn't just Noah. Like, like I saw you get robbed. 
And like, the thing is, is like, you know, my, my kids are, are six and eight. I will point to a guy like you. I will point to a guy like Noah Gregor. And I'll be like, look how hard they're working out there on the ice. Like, look at the, look at how much effort they're putting out there. Cause I feel like hockey in particular rewards effort. And I felt like as a team last year, you guys got the short end of the stick. Like you're playing really hard. I mean, there was that one stretch where you guys had like eight games where you lost by one goal or in overtime or it was a one goal game and you gave up an empty net. It was like, like the hockey gods were not in your favor. Yeah. I mean, I can, I, I can think of goals, you know, I win a face off. It, it jumps over a D man stick. I back check. They make a two on one pass. Uh, I dove for it, stopped the two on one pass across, but it went back to the original shooter. Our goalie's already across the net reading pass empty net. So things like that happen. Uh, obviously we, we get bounces the other way too, but um, to your point, I, I think, the only thing you can do is work hard. You know, in the summer we'll play golf a little bit and, and, and I get frustrated because when you're playing poorly at golf, you can't just work harder. Um, you know, I just you either know how to hit a driver or you don't, and there's no, you know, trying harder at yeah. golf. Um, I think with hockey, you can simplify. I think that's something, you know, I'll fall back on if the puck's not going in. It's almost harder to go 19 games without a point than it is to get a point. Just the way, uh, the things were going last year. So um, I pr do appreciate you saying that, you know, I, I, I pride myself on, on effort. Um, and I think, like I said, if points aren't going in, you can find me, you know, taking faceoffs, blocking shots, killing penalties, making the right play, staying positive. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, not, not having a, you know, a sour face in the room. Um, it's kind of something you, you need to do to, to keep the guys, keep you guys happy. And that's one of the things I try to focus on. Yeah. I mean, I remember there were games where you and uh, Cogs before he got moved to the abs, where there would be a tough loss, but you guys would not come out looking defeated. I think you would come out looking a little ticked off sometimes, but it wasn't like a, a woe is me type situation. It was like, that sucked. Let's talk about what happened. I mean, obviously you, you knew Cogs from beforehand and you guys are friends, but you know, like was, is it ever hard to face the media in those instances? Like I would imagine that if I had what I felt was a bad day at work, even though I felt like I tried hard, I, having to explain it to everybody would be difficult. But I mean, you guys, you never pulled any punches and you were pretty clear about what you, you know, saw happen out there on the ice. I mean, even though I'm sure that there may have been, you know, uh, a simmering pot inside your head emotionally more than you were letting on. Yeah, it's, it's never easy, uh, you know, speaking to media when, when you lose, um, you know, maybe when it was your fault for a loss, but, uh, you know, it's almost worse if you hide from it. They're going to write what they're going to write. Um, you know, if you can get your thoughts on it out there. Um, so it's, it's as fair as it can be. But, um, yeah, you know, you play in the league this long, you understand you have to speak to the media. That's, you know – that's something we do. Uh, I think this year the, the rooms are open again, so maybe it won't be as um, not awkward, but uh, you know, just it, it, it was a lot different when, when they're in there and they can grab guys here or there and you can have more of a face to face talk with somebody, which I think is nicer, but um, yeah, when you lose, it sucks. Uh, you know, like as the captain coach always has to go face it after a loss. So, you know, Cogs or I have to have to do it once in a while. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't too big of a deal. Did you uh, text Cogs when uh, when they won? Did you uh, talk to him much over the summer? I did. Yeah, I was I was pretty emotional. You know, he's uh, a close friend, but he's also just such a true professional. And and honestly, nobody deserved uh, to win the cup more than he did. He, he the way he, he goes about the goes about his day. He's he takes care of his body. He's he's just a, a great great guy and. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, were filming it when they won and when it was his turn with the cup and we sent it to him. Lauren and I were both tearing up a little bit for him and um, checked in with him a bit over the, over the summer. I know he, he had his cup day. I, I wish it was early in the summer. It would have been cool to, to go celebrate it with him. But uh, he, um, yeah, I think he had a great cup day and uh, got another great deal back with a team that uh, is set up to, you know, challenge for a cup again. So, yeah. Um, frustrating you know year in san jose last year uh but i think uh could be happier that he he was able to to win the cup
Yeah, no, very cool. And obviously he was, you know, really cool with us all last year. And, you know, we had a fun time. I remember it was in the East Coast road trip right before the break. You got to do the uh, the interview with the TU guys, which was fun. And, you know, you, you get to know guys, and obviously you know them a lot better than I. But, I mean, it's he's an easy guy to root for. And, you know, in this business, you meet guys, they go and they play all around the uh, – all around the league, and suddenly you've uh, you've got more of a uh, more of a, a dog in the fight when you're watching the Abs than maybe you, you had before. At least that's how it was for me. Even though the Abs have some players that are pretty darn fun to watch, I was asking uh, Mario. I was like, "So did you get Makar to teach you that inside out move from the boards?" He's like, "No, not yet. I don't think I could do it." But <laughs> he, did, yeah, he does feel- a lot of things uh, no one else can do. He's pretty incredible. Yeah, dude. I you know I I enjoy watching. Uh, well, there's a lot of guys on that team I enjoy watching, but uh, yeah, it was you know it's the Stanley Cup, man. Like you're you watch the playoffs. Like a lot of guys that I've talked to, hockey players, they'll be like, "Hey, if I'm not in it, it's it's hard to watch." So you for you, you were able to watch it. Yeah, you know, I I honestly think that having won before makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, when I was traded to, um, I think it was when I was traded to Vancouver from Anaheim. Anaheim was still really good and they were in uh, game seven against Chicago that next year. And I, I couldn't, couldn't have paid me to watch it. I was just like so pissed off and um, happy for my friends, obviously for making a run, you know, guys that I was close with there, but um, you just, I just couldn't do it. And after winning with Pitt, I think it uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, last year was, was tough just because I hadn't missed the playoffs. And I feel like, since like 2012, something like that. So um, it was a little bit weird, but but I watched almost every game. We would have it on at least cooking dinner. And yeah. Um, yeah, also the longer you play, the more teams you play on. Like me, you know a lot of guys. Um, you are rooting for individuals on certain teams. I probably know a guy on every team. So um, just keeping tabs on them. And it's always uh, pretty exciting hockey to watch. So, um, yeah, I do. I definitely did watch last year for sure. Yeah, it's it's the best, man. Like I can't. You have to fight to pull me away from watching the games, and and it's. I mean, it's just it's the best. It's it's you know, yeah. and obviously nobody here in San Jose wants to get used to not being in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I mean, that was the norm for so long in the last couple of years. You know, the team hasn't been able to get it, and you know, listen, things cycle. That you know, there was an incredible run here, and then now you're part of a group with now a new head coach, a new general manager, trying to get the team back into the playoffs. Um, you know, that's obviously a, a lot of pressure, but you know, you're on the team for a reason. Guys know that you have the background that you do. You have the, the character thing going on, the leadership. They know that you've been a part of good things before. I, I mean, how do you feel about how things are shaping up this year? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, I think last year Cogs and I had spoken a lot with Doug before the year and, um, even, you know, up until Doug left the team was, was calling us, a, a once or twice a week and we were we were really involved and, and um kind of the direction the team was going and then obviously when Doug left it seemed just like uh it's tough to explain it was you know just just didn't work like things just weren't working and I thought we had a, a good team but um you know guys got hurt and mm-hmm. there's guys minor league guys that are probably up but maybe before um they're ready I know it benefited me to play you know 70 games in the AHL yeah. So I, I think as, as a whole last year was just, was just a struggle. Um, I think, you know, hiring um, Mike Greer to come in and uh, kind of just put his mark on it and, and have now a vision and a direction for the next few years um, is huge. And um, I, I do look at our team uh, as stronger. I think we're deeper, especially at forward. I think we, you know, are full of NHL, uh, you know, right players uh and i'm excited for it so um that that was a great seems like a great hire by the sharks and then um david quinn I, i'm very familiar with playing for him back in you know from 07 to 2010 and um i've kept in touch with him and uh just a guy who will bring accountability and bring hard work and uh as a sharks fan you will you will see us work i'll tell you that uh, that's one of his hallmarks and um, what's made him so successful. What's your personal goal this year? Uh, I mean, I would say playoffs. So it's probably not what you're looking for personally, but. Uh, it's your answer, um, man. 
<laughs> do, doing everything I can to help us get there. I think uh, um, when you're 34 and, you know, on an expiring contract, uh, there's obviously – uh, rumors and stuff that, you know, if the team's not doing well, you'll be moved at the deadline and you'll be a rental. And, and for me, I can say, I, I want to be here for, for the next few years. You know, I, I think things are going in the right direction. Um, personally this year, I'd like to, you know, be between 30 and 40 points. Um, I'd like to score earlier than the 19th game. We'll see if that happens, but um, just, just do the, the things you know, when I'm scoring, when a third or fourth line is scoring, it, it makes your team so much harder. It takes pressure off a of coach, takes pressure off a of Tommy, those lines. Um, maybe take some more D zone draws and free them up for ozone draws, but um, be good on the power play, be good on the penalty kill. Uh, that's kind of what I'll focus on, block shots, try to block 100 shots again. And, um, yeah, just be a, a guy that young guys can, can uh, learn from and, and – uh, depend on speaking to the young guys you know a lot of the fan base right now talks about a William Eklund or Thomas Bordalo uh, is it almost unfair the amount of pressure that those guys might be feeling from the outside like just to have just to have that much people I mean they're not these aren't like established NHL stars I mean it's just that's the, the hockey culture now it's like if you're a young dude that's highly touted people are going to put a lot on your shoulders yeah, I mean that's the that's the hockey world these days. Though it seems like it's getting younger and younger, and guys come in um, readier at a at a younger age every single year. So um, obviously we got glimpses of them both last year. Very skilled guys. Um, you know, Eki's here right now, and he's he's really solid. Like uh, I bumped in, he was protecting the puck, and I bumped into him yesterday, and he's he's like a, a little rock. So. Um, <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing when you're a little bit smaller is being strong. It seems like they had good summers. Um, I haven't seen boards yet, but uh, with a chance, the young guys with a chance come in and, and, um, and have great camps for sure. Nice, man. Well, I will let you go. I appreciate your time as always, Mr. Benino, but uh, look forward to seeing you at the rink next week, man. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun one. Great. Thanks so much.